Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. It is college football preview season. Thank goodness. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. You can follow us on Twitter at Winning Cures. You can follow me at Gary WCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. And then you can find us basically everywhere else. Facebook, YouTube, uh, Periscope, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, wherever you can find it. Wherever it's you everywhere. like to listen to podcasts. You got it. You found us We're already, right here. obviously. Obviously, you're listening already. Uh, we are going to talk about the Sun Belt today. We're going to talk about the East. Sun Belt East. Conference breakdown, yeah, for 2019. 2019. I'm, season. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. We got a uh, we got a lot of new faces. We got uh, just all kind of different stuff. I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert. Well, I'm gonna. I'm absolutely. I am gonna pretend. I'm gonna. Yeah, we're gonna pretend, pretend that we're. An now, I I've done some some research. You've done well, some research. We're we gonna like talk about the teams overall in the Sun Belt. All these conferences have a haves and a have nots. Yeah, the haves of all these conferences we like. Yeah. We like the have nots. I don't know that I could speak real intelligently about any of them. Well, until they can prove that they deserve to be one of the haves. There's just so many teams, I can't know them all. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, but it's I do, the truth. You know, you and I are both partial to several of the teams in this conference. Yes, very much so. Uh, the show, as always, brought to you by BetNow.eu. Go check them out for yourself. Fantastic layout, fantastic sports book. Uh, one of the best online sports books out there. they got great odds. You can bet on basically anything. If you're a recreational gambler, this is the spot for you. Go check it out. Betnow.eu. You can actually see it down at the bottom of the screen if you're watching on the video. Uh, if you're on the podcast, it'll be in the description. But go check it out. It's uh, The promo code is WINNING50. That's W-I-N-N-I-N-G-5-0. 50% deposit bonus. You put in 100 bucks, they'll give you 50 You put in 1000 bucks, they'll give you 500 Doesn't matter what it is. They're giving you 50% of that back to play with. And what's better than free money? Nothing. One money. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't win it if you don't sign up. Exactly. And you can't win if you don't play. So uh, so that's the deal. Betnow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50. You will enjoy it. I promise. They make things simple. They treat us right. They will treat you right. Let's fire into this bad boy. The App State Mountaineers. Appalachian State. Starting with the big boy. Now, it, is it Appalachian or Appalachian? Or Appalachian? I, I, I firmly believe that we... we we live in Mississippi, raised, so we <laughs> live in Mississippi. We get kind of one of those blanket passes for saying things incorrectly if we would that's, like. That's a very good point. Like my wife's family is from Ohio. They say they have like they what's enunciate to be everything exactly the most, correctly. The purest form of the American English language. She should probably have to say it right. Yeah, I get away with saying it however the hell I want. People just assume, oh, he's, 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 he's from the dummy. south. He's okay. <laughs> He's he's from Mississippi. It's I, okay. I say Appalachian State. Appalachian State. How do you so, say it? I say Appalachian State. That's, that sounds but, perfect. But I think it's better if we just said App State. That, I'm That's what everybody that. calls them anyway, right? So App State. All right. So the Mountaineers, eleven and two last year, seven and one in the conference. This was a dynamite football team last year. Correct. Uh, they got nine starters back on offense, six on defense. Look, as far as experience goes, they're number three in the conference. But number nine in the country. country. I was just about to say. I mean, they bring back a ton of people. Uh, head coach uh, Scott Satterfield, he left for Louisville. Like, he went 51 and 24 in six seasons. The new coach, Eli Drinkwitz, uh, he was North Carolina State's offensive coordinator um, from 16 through 18. He was Boise State's OC back in 15. Uh, Zach Thomas returns at quarterback, junior running back, uh, Darrington Evans. He had 1,220 plus rushing yards last year. Uh, seven of their top eight receivers are back. Like, this offense should not miss a beat. It should right. Now, obviously, we'll see. Ted Roof uh, takes over the defense. They had the number six total defense last year, number four scoring defense, number five passing defense. Secondary leads the FBS with 73 interceptions since 2015. I don't think we're going to see a huge drop-off this year. Uh I think there will be a little bit of one, though. I think there will be a small one. And and where I think the drop-off will mainly fall is is can can Drinkwitz? Am I saying that right? Yeah, Drinkwitz. Drinkwitz. Can he bring the program to a level where they are known for 
knocking off big boys when they go on the road to play these Power Five schools. And they've got they've got an they've, opportunity. They've got a couple. Yeah, they've got they've got two of them with on, on the at schedule. North Carolina and at South Carolina. And neither one of them are monsters. It's it, you're exactly. not you're not going to Tuscaloosa. Okay? No, you're no. not going to the shoe. It, it's it's not like going to Penn State last no, year. That's right. And that's they right. almost did that. That, that you're absolutely um, right. They almost both knocked of these, off Tennessee a couple of years ago. Like both, people still remember that game. Both of these are winnable. Yeah. I don't think they're going to win them. I don't either. Based on the way I have the record, I, I don't either. Yeah. But that this is where the coaching difference could could come in. Yes, um, you're losing what no, would be a legend I, in this this realm of. Oh, you're 100 percent right about that. I mean, uh, Satterfield will always. I should be a have legend. known this, and I should have looked this up before we started. I'll ask you because you will know it. How long since they kind of left Division Two A and actually joined the Sun Belt? When was, was it? Two that, years 20, ago? No, 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 no. That's been multiple years. I thought it was. It's it's been more a while. recent than not. No, it, here, look, I got this thing. I can pull it up right now. Uh, it's mean, it's been a little us, while because we don't want to go um, too long on one team. No, be here no all I think night. I think this will be fine. But uh, it, but no, it's it's been a little bit. I I want to say maybe six, seven years. Oh, that's way longer than I thought. Um, so I was I was definitely would have taken the under. No, I I think it's been a little while. But I, I do know this. They um, like they have been successful basically since they got into Division One. Yeah, whatever we call this new subdivision uh, uh, since uh, since twenty fourteen. Okay, so four years. So that would be four years. When I, 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18. Well, I guess so. Okay. I, this will be the sixth uh, year. This will be the sixth year. So, in in those years, I mean, it, they've made it to a bowl game every year except for. And so they they won the Sun Belt the last three years. Yeah, I was about to say they won it like three in a row. And was it their first year that they didn't make a bowl? I want to say yeah. And then after that, they've been bowl eligible every year. I mean, they've been rocking everybody. Yeah, because 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, they have made bowl games yes, every year. Okay. Satterfield, uh, Satterfield's unreal. Well, like, he's absolutely. just he's just ridiculous. Uh, and what's crazy is they still should have made a bowl game in 2014. Like they were seven and five in his first season in FBS, but two main teams were bowl his, eligible. His his first season as a head coach was 2013 and he took over App State they were still in the Southern Conference in FCS and he went 4-8 and eight. and then they make the jump to FBS and you're supposed to get worse you're supposed to fall backwards and they that's, went from 4-8 and eight to 7-5 and five that's some belt money to, man oh yeah 4-8 four, four and eight to 7-5 and five to 11-2 and two to 10-3 and 9-4 and 10-2 and and so, I, I mean he's yeah this this team uh, the the program itself, they care about that football program. Correct. And I do think that they got a good coach. I Two like Eli years Drinkwitz. ago, they hosted Miami. Yeah. Mark Rick brought Miami on the road to play in a little stadium that looked like it held 5,000 people. Yeah. Uh, how they got that? Well, Miami plays a lot of those games anyway. Like they've done it before. It's I mean, not they the first Toledo time. I was gonna say it's not the first time that they'd ever done it, but it was just it really that had to be the smallest stadium that Miami's played in. Probably so. I mean Toledo right. Stadium looked like a dwarf that thing. Yeah. It, I it might be wrong. Crazy. It just did it just looked different with the mountains behind it and whatever, but it it did look I mean it was tiny and, and Miami did I mean they handled them pretty good. Well yeah. I mean, but uh all right so as far as this right. year goes, I look I've got if, them at if, nine and three. They finished eleven and two last year. Eleven and two. I've, Seven and one in conference. Yep. Won dominated the division. The, dominated yep. the, the, the the Sun Belt again. And dominated the bowl game even without Satterfield. Uh, Satterf- Correct. Correct. Had a great, great showing. Who coached the bowl game? The uh, You know what? It's got it listed here. I yeah. think Mark Ivey. I believe that was, was the he guy. The, he was the OC, correct? Believe that is correct. I should have. All these you, questions. You got all these questions. <laughs> when, we're, when we go live. It, all right, live. it was we Mark are, Ivey. Yeah. And I have no idea if he was. I think he was the OC. I would I, I would be willing to bet that he was the OC. That's okay. And so you got you got the guy right. I'll give you props yep. on that. What do you think they fall to this year? Because we both have I, them taking a little bit of step back. I got them nine and three. Got them nine and three. Okay. Now I've got them losing at Troy, at South Carolina, at North Carolina, beating everybody else. And even even those other games, I think are probably going to be pretty close because I think North Carolina is going to take a little bit under Mac Brown. South Carolina is still like they're going to play. You know, they're going to do what they do in the SEC. I have no idea what to expect from that. But, well, with South Carolina, what you can expect is against these 
pretty good group of five teams. Small teams, they're gonna. They're gonna they struggle. are. They're gonna struggle, and they'll win by like one possession. And against the big teams, they're gonna they're gonna struggle. They're gonna it, they're gonna lose by well, but two, three some, I mean, they, they could end up beating Texas A and M by right. two touchdowns. They could beat you know who I know I know I'm just they, saying they can win the game. I don't they, know that they get blown out by many people. I don't know that they blow out anybody. That's it, and we'll we'll talk about South Carolina later on. That's but right. it, App State like App State's definitely gonna blow some teams out. Oh yeah, um, well there's some teams to be had on the schedule. Yes, I mean that's just part of playing in the Sun Belt. Now it it does it does scare me like there's. There are some games. Obviously, they get Georgia Southern at home. I think that's revenge spot. I think they're going to get that one. I was about to say, that matters. The game at Louisiana. Like, it's on a Wednesday night. They've got a bye week the week before, obviously. I mean, if you're playing on Wednesday, you got to whatever. But at Louisiana, like, that could that could be a really difficult. A if Billy game, Napier yeah. has got some. Now, I think it's going to take a little time to, you know, develop the talent that he brought in. But it's it, he's recruiting, and he's got talent there, and he's a good coach. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just going to be tough. No, you're you're right about that. Um, and they right. get Troy on the road, right? Yes. So that, that's that's the biggest thing yeah. is you play two in conference games against two what are going to be well coached teams. I know Troy's got a new coach, but we like Chip Lindsey. We'll get into that when they get to yep. Troy. So, um, all right. So let's move off of Epstein. I've got them nine and three. You got them nine and three. I got them nine and three. Uh, both of us six and two in conference. I didn't. I don't really. Or, do sorry, that. sorry. I don't. Do I've that. got them. I've got them seven and one in conference. I put this down wrong. Okay. Because so I've only you, got them losing at Troy. You don't have them losing both those games. I've got them losing to North Carolina and South Carolina, but I don't have them losing two conference games. So I've never done the, I think they'll win this game, I think they'll lose that game. I just yeah. think overall this is how I think they're going to they're gonna pan out. If they end up beating, and here's the reason, my, this is the way my brain works. If they beat North Carolina, they pull off that big upset, I could easily see them losing one of these conference games against a Louisiana or a Troy that they might not have lost. I just kind of think well, I mean, the like football if, karma always seems to work its way out. Say that they win at South Carolina. It, Georgia State isn't great, but they've got you know they got some dudes, they got some talent. So it, you know it's that. But then you've also got like if you're really gearing up for uh, Georgia Southern, you know, do you have a letdown game? Do you have a letdown game at South Alabama the week before? That's, that's it. Like you're you're preparing for this weird triple option, and then now you go play a different team with a different yeah. style. And and, and South and Alabama again, talent they haven't done a lot with it. That's right. But they have pulled off some crazy upsets. That, this is why I don't like pinpoint. And maybe I maybe I guess it's a cop out, but I don't like saying I think they'll win this game. I think they'll lose this game. I'm gonna give you a record. Man, I'll put my name on everything. I'm I all know. good. That's I'm fine. all good. If people want to talk trash, well, I'm not worried about the it. trash talking. It's just I just think it always kinds of works. Kind of works out this way. I can understand and that. I've been way off on some of these. So, all right. So we we spent forever on App State. Now we're going to roll through uh, the other four from this division, uh, and then we'll have another segment uh, probably the next day. Whatever. We're pre-recording this, just so you know. Um, let's talk about Coastal Carolina. The Coastal Carolina Chanticleers, which is such a fun name. That's such a cool mascot. Uh, look, they went five and seven last year, two and six in the conference. Return six guys on offense, six guys on defense uh, as far as starters go. Number 57 most experienced team in the country, number eight in the conference. Head coach uh, Jamie Chadwell. He was the offensive coordinator the last three seasons. Now, he did coach the team as the head coach last year. Joe Moglia, 56-22 and 22 in the last six years that he was there. Uh, Chadwell was 35-14 and 14 in four years at Charleston Southern. So he's got head coaching experience. Defense returns eight of ten leading tacklers, but it is transitioning from a four three to a and check this out, you're gonna love this. A three four with four three principles. Yeah. And so we'll see. The transition could be a little a little crazy here. Junior running back CJ Marable, he's gonna be the key offensive weapon this year. Keep an eye on him. He had six point one yards per carry last year with six touchdowns. Both quarterbacks, Fred Payton and Bryce Carpenter, fit into Chadwell's offense which uh, they get all three of their interior linemen back, but they lose both tackles. There is a chance that this team could get back to being a bowl team, but I ain't seeing it. Like, I, I think it's going to take a little bit of time. There is there is a transition period. It, I understand that Chadwell has been there. I got that. But new D.C., changing up what they're doing on defense. Like, I, yes, we've talked about this in the past where sometimes it's easier to transition on defense because your main goal is like just tackle the Stop guy, right? It. Yeah, you're not. But 
I think with the offense and everything else, like it, now it's now it's Chadwell's. Now it's his. The way that Joe Mowgli ran it was different. Correct. So I think the transition going to be a little bit different. Uh, they weren't exactly super successful last year, five and seven, uh, two and six in the conference. I think they take a little bit of a step back. What uh, what have you got them this year? So they finished five and seven last year, correct? Yep. Correct. I got them four and eight. That's I got them exactly one what I've got them. Man, yeah. That's I've I've got them beating Norfolk State, uh, winning at UMass, got them beating Georgia State, and I got them beating Texas State, and then losing to everybody. I mean, it's it's t- if you're not one of the halves in this conference, it's, hard. it's difficult, right? So they they're out of conference schedule. Oh, Eastern yeah. Michigan at Kansas, like these aren't teams that most people would be scared of. Nope. Eastern Michigan is a good football team. That's right. Kansas with less miles, they're going to want to get that win. I, I have expectations of Kansas being yes. better. And they're not going to win many conference games. they got to win they got to get this one. Less so doesn't get beat by teams that aren't supposed to beat him. Right. He gets beat by teams that are supposed to beat him. Exactly. So, uh, but then you've also got at App State, at Georgia Southern, Troy and Louisiana come in, at Arkansas it's State, at Louisiana Monroe. The, I don't know where you find the wins. The the coaches in this conference are good. They yeah. really there really is some really good young coaching in this conference. Yeah, I I do agree with you. So and, we, and I and I say young because not all the guys are real young, but they have been coaching head coaches forever. But yeah, man, these guys they're not afraid to play anybody. No, you're you're right about that. They all that. are very confident in their style of football. I don't think they're going to take a step forward. I think I think the gap between the haves and the have nots are getting bigger. I think you're probably right. Uh, let's move on from Coastal Carolina to Georgia Southern. The Georgia Southern Eagles, look, they open with you boys at LSU. Yeah. A little, little I, crazy, right? I, I hate. Well, we got to all see. If we were playing them like week four, just don't want to play a triple option team in the middle of your season. No, the fact that you got them opening week, season. Week, like, week one. I'm by. Even with Texas the week after, you're it doesn't matter. No. Uh, I, just, I just don't want one week to prepare for a triple option. Yeah, no, you're you're right. That's uh, <laughs> ten and three last year, six and two in the conference. They got five guys back on offense, seven on defense. Uh, number seven most experienced in the conference, number thirty seven in the country. So that's that's pretty good. I was gonna say not that, There's a lot of experience coming back in this that's conference. Right. Uh, Chad Lunsford, head coach, twelve and seven in one and a half years now, and has shifted Georgia Southern back to the triple option. Number thirty seven most experienced returning. Um, they only had five turnovers last year. They were plus 22. Now, you have to expect a regression to the mean somewhat. Yes. Right? Because that plus 22 was tops in all of FBS last year. Like, and, that is insane. I mean, we say this all the time. It's been said throughout all of football. This is a weird-shaped oblong ball that bounces funny. If you think you can predict fumbles and turnovers, you just you just can't. Now you can you can teach to try and uh, force them. That's right. But, but I mean, my goodness, these guys only up, lost five causing last fumbles year. and recovering fumbles are totally different. It's, and if you want to talk about it, go talk to Bill Conley at SB Nation, who <laughs> right. who talks about turnover luck that's because right. you cannot. That's not a metric that you can count on. No, you so, can't quantify it in any way, shape, form, or fashion. It exactly. just it just happens. Junior quarterback Shy Wirtz is back uh, along with three offensive line starters. Seven of the nine top tacklers are back on defense, uh, and most of them are in uh, the second year of the three four. I was just about to say, yeah, they've, so, they've done this for a year. Yeah, they're they're, they're gonna be more it. comfortable. Uh, schedule is significantly more difficult this year than it was last year. Last year, the schedule set up perfectly for them. They're, uh, they're taking some checks. Well, they they got at LSU, at Minnesota, and then in. In conference, you got at App State, at Troy, at Arkansas State. Yeah, they got they got some hard in conference games. I, all those ones that I just listed, I have them losing all of them. I think so too. Um, but that's I think they win everything else. I think they beat Louisiana at home. Ooh, maybe not. Uh, maybe not. I, I think they them. I think they beat uh, South Alabama so on the road. So you've got them seven and five. I've got them seven and five. So I've got them eight and four. So I got them going backwards a little. Bit. I got them winning one of those road games. But, okay, so it, it, one of them, whether it's at Troy, at yeah, Arkansas State, you think, don't know which one. And but, I didn't know which one, but I just didn't think they're going to lose all these games. Yeah. They're too well coached. Lunsford has been doing this for too long. The triple option is too hard to prepare for. They'll catch somebody sleeping, not ready for it, and they'll they'll beat one of those teams. 
Now, I will say this. Minnesota has to play at Fresno State I, the week before that. I like P.J. Fleck. I don't know that he's going to let his team slip up, but it wouldn't shock. I don't it wouldn't play surprise a, me either. I don't want to play a non-conference, triple option opponent in the middle of the season. See, and that's the I thing. That's, just that's why I brought that up, that. because they play Fresno State, I believe, the week before that. And it's at Fresno. Now, they'll probably get through that one because Fresno, like, there's – Barely any experience uh, yeah. returning. We we like Fresno. We'll get into them later. But if you're in Minnesota and you take a trip out to Fresno and get to hang out in Cali for a little bit, and then you got to come back home to play against the triple option, I wonder completely. Is that, I wonder different. for the coaches, is that so much of a recruiting trip? It probably. Why are you going to Fresno? You're going to Fresno because you want to be in the state of California. I mean, Notre Dame played. I mean, different levels of Minnesota and Notre Dame. Yeah, but. Notre Dame went to California, I think, five times last year. Yeah, like, and and they want to, they're willing to. I want, I want all those road games. Oh yeah, because it makes we sense. want those kids at Notre Dame. I mean, they they played Navy in San Diego last year. That's right. <laughs> like, That's right. They, absolutely, right. I'd do it too. So anyway. Georgia Southern, I think, like they will be, they will be good. They will be a tough out for anybody. But I think that they drop a little bit this year. Seven and five. I've got them five and three in the conference. So I've got them eight and four and a. Just need them to lose the first one. Just the first one. God. Just to LSU. Just to your boys. We lost to Troy a couple years ago, and it really hurt what was kind of turning into a special season. I mean, y'all still went 9-3 and three that year. Yeah, but if your first year in your O and you get a 10-win season, hey, you, know you don't crazy. have that loss on like, your resume, that, exactly. that's a big deal. Then you got that's a, back-to-back 10-win seasons. That's right. It's a big deal. And, and you yeah. don't have a, a, a G5 school loss. That's... Well, and, and on top of that, it, besides the, the G5 school loss, uh, so there was the blowout to Mississippi State, yep. the 10 nothing loss to Alabama, and then Troy. Troy. It's like hammered Auburn, got by Texas A&M. Like, did, did, did everything the else rest, you're supposed yeah, to do. Did everything else you're supposed to, but lose at home to Troy. That's why I never take these games for granted anymore. I just, but, but here's the thing. For a decade, I didn't have to because less – did not lose these games. Yeah. I just knew I could wake up and say, oh, it's not an SEC game. We're going to enjoy this football game. I don't yeah. have to worry about it. Have me a cold beer. I'm going to get to relax, and I don't care. Yeah. Oh, we're playing Arkansas, Ole Miss. Now, now i got to stress out about every conference game. Yeah. I mean, it, well, it, it, it's, it's, it's always close games. That's fine. It's fine. There's a stress level there. Non-conference, I didn't have that. So yeah. just Just need my boys to win one. All right, let's move off Georgia Southern. Uh, Georgia I've, State? Georgia State. Is that next? Yes. Georgia this is, State. This is this is one of my have-nots. The Georgia State Panthers. <laughs> now, here's the deal. Uh, it, look, they went 2-10 and ten last year. Not good. 1-7 and seven in conference. They returned four guys on offense, seven starters on defense. Uh, number 22 most experience in the country coming back. Number five though in the in the conference but only four on offense but only four but, well, this, but only four starters, starters back on offense but it, it, everybody okay. has played like this there's is, a difference okay this was one of my situations where i i like to think maybe the fact that only four starters are coming back is a good thing possibly um what well, can't be worse well maybe it can be well i mean they still got two wins last year i mean it, you know you can always drop from that I, I got uh, it. head coach <laughs> Sean Elliott. So it, you remember he was the former South Carolina interim coach. Interim, he went seven and five his first year. Uh, went to the first bowl game in in years. I was there. about to say really good, and then drops from seven and five to two and ten. Now they lost their offensive coordinator Travis Trickett to West Virginia. Replaced him with uh, Western Carolina's Brad Glenn. So I think that Glenn is going to be able to do some things that they'll hopefully improve. Uh, for the first time under Elliott, they've got a returning starter at quarterback, Dan Ellington. They've got experienced depth on the offensive line. A lot of injuries last year forced the secondary to play four freshmen. But the defense is more experienced. They should just be better based on they've been in the system. They know they know how things are going now. Because they were completely ravaged with injuries last year. True. So you would think that they would be better. But... I look at the schedule. Like, here's the thing. I was just about to say, this is not an easy schedule. Georgia State, no, it's not an easy schedule. But on top of that, Georgia State has guys. 
Like, you look across the field at them, and they have got talent. They got some big dudes. They're physical. Like, it, they they look like what a Sean Elliott team would look like, right? Because you know him. He's, yeah. he's kind of fiery. That's right. But, man, this schedule, like, it, look, at Tennessee – they you got, your, like you got t- your win. They look like a team that was built in the deep south. Yeah, you, you Georgia, got your you got your Furman in win. Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. They just they yeah. all kind of look alike. They all kind of look like that. Yeah, they all look but, alike. But you can have all of that and still not be very good. Well, true. And I think that they're not going to be very good this I don't year. Either. I've got them two and ten. Um, I've got them beating Furman, and I've got them beating South Alabama. But the rest of this schedule at Tennessee to open the uh, the season at Western Michigan. At Texas State, Arkansas State, at Coastal Carolina, Army, Troy, uh, bye week, and then at Louisiana Monroe, who was pretty good, App State, South Alabama, and at Georgia Southern. Like, it, where do where you find the wins? the wins? No, I don't. I I don't. I don't even know that they get that South Alabama win. I I think they could fall even farther. I got them one and eleven. I, you're right. All, these. These types of schools, they have talent. They have dudes. It's just, for some reason, it's really hard for these schools to put anything together over and over and over again. Yep. What uh, What do you have? I got them 1-11. 1-11. Right? So I, I've got I them 1-7 in conference. I think they lose that, that South, South Alabama, Alabama game. game. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. All right, let's move off of that. Let's make sure we get this uh, within our little 30-minute time oh, frame yeah, here. Uh, Troy. The Troy Trojans, 10-3 and three last year, 7-1. and one. Seven rest, uh, returning starters on offense, six on defense. Number 35 most experienced team in the country. That is only good for sixth in this conference. That is worse than half of the, the league. Uh, former head coach Neil Brown won 31 games in the last three seasons, and he is off to West to Virginia. Rockier uh, pastures, I guess. Uh, ma- the, the Mountaineers Listen, and whatnot. I think losing him is an absolute world changer. I like Chip Lindsey, new yeah. head coach. I, I think Neil Brown is up there in the conversation of, you know, best coaches in the country. Best coaches in the country. That yeah. top 10, 15 guys. I believe that he's gonna be in that conversation now that he's with the big boys. I don't think that you can understate losing him at all. They went ten and three. Now, last I, year, I will. Right? I will say this. Yeah, ten and three, seven and one in the conference. Uh, he did leave the cupboard stocked. No problem. For you're, Chip you're, you're right. You're absolutely um, right. Jeb Lindsey, former uh, Auburn offensive coordinator. That's right. Uh, former Kansas offensive coordinator because Les hired him, and then he took the, the Troy job. Uh, quarterback Caleb Barker started six games. He got hurt. Then quarterback Slugger Smith started the last six. Uh, they've got a ton of experience everywhere else. The defense returns 11 guys who started multiple games in 2018. Uh, the East title like should be on the line in the finale against App State. That's right. Anything less than that is... The Probably fact that gonna they be play the last game of the season, that game's gonna matter. Yeah, that game's gonna matter. So I've got them falling backwards, though. I, I've got them falling back from ten and three, but only to nine and three. I've got them six and six. Now that's you and I talked about this. Um, the schedule sets up. You know, you got Campbell to start, then you've got a bye week, then Southern Miss comes to Troy. I like Southern Miss this year. Yeah, I know you love Southern Miss. Um, they play at Akron. I think they get that one. I think, that. I think they lose to Arkansas State and at Missouri. See, they just play on the road at some tough games. That's the biggest thing. Well, and it's it, so they play at Missouri, but then they've got a bye week, right. and then South Alabama comes in. I think they get that win, and then I think they win at Georgia State. I think they win at Coastal Carolina. I think they win at home against Georgia Southern. I think they win at Texas State. I think they lose at Louisiana. But I think that they beat App State in the season finale on that Friday. See, it wouldn't shock me. So the difference is, is I, I, I think they're probably going to lose. I like Georgia Southern. We've had this conversation. I like App State a lot. Like I just think they're games that they're going to, they're going to lose. I can. I think I can the difference that. between Neil Brown and Chip Lindsey is going to somewhere show its head of, of, hey, you need to make a decision to win or lose a game and you're going to make the wrong one. It's your first time to be a real head coach. You're from – now, I do think he's going to – I don't think Troy's going to be one of these teams where they're just going to become one of those have-nots. Yeah. He knows Alabama. He's from Alabama. He can recruit that state. If you don't go to Auburn, if you don't go to Alabama, he can get those guys in that state and say, hey, you're not going to play major power five ball. 
come here. I don't think many people are leaving the state. I think I think you're probably right. Probably right. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to uh, betnow.eu. We'll see you guys next time.